Sybil. She's a 10-month-old Labrador puppy. She doesn't know it yet, but tonight she's going to be involved in a very important rescue. That's because Fable belongs to the cliff rescue team, which helps people who get stuck or lost on the cliffs. Fable, come here. Tonight, Fable and her owner, Rob, are having a very important practice. Back at headquarters, the team was getting ready for the night ahead. Of course, for a night rescue, lights are vital, even for a practice run. By the time we hit those cliffs, it would be pitch dark out there. It's a bit like a game of hide and seek, but for real. As the helicopter lifted up, we saw the lights of the town spread out below us. But within a few moments, we'd left them far behind. And darkness was all we could see. I suddenly realised just how much we'd need all the torches and lamps we had with us to cut through the darkness. In the end, it was the powerful helicopter lights which picked out Rob and Fable, safe on the cliff but far below us. It was a steep and tricky climb. Throughout the rescue, the helicopter hovered overhead to give us all the light we so desperately needed. Our brave Labrador was the real hero of the night. Not in the least bit worried by the bright helicopter headlights, she reached the cliff top smoothly and safely. She definitely made it look easy, but don't be fooled by all that tail wagging. A cliff top night rescue is a real adventure. You lot seem to think that us badgers aren't very friendly because you don't see us during the day. But the real reason is our eyes see a lot better in the darkness. So we like to go out at night and look around, like me here in this playground. Let's have a look up here. Oh, oh no, I'm not too sure about that. But the good thing is I can see where I'm going and smell my way as I go. I like to explore all the food that you've left for me overnight. Human beings are awfully lazy with putting things in bins. So there's plenty for me and my friends to eat, like this fella here. We can go around all night without being disturbed and eat whatever we fancy. What do you got there? Oh, charming. Not joining you then. Okay. Bye -bye. <laughs> Anshu loved his bed. It was warm and cosy, a very snoozy-woozy sort of bed. And every night, Dad said the same things. Good night, Anshu. And then he'd walk to the door and say, Sleep tight, Anshu, sweet dreams, before turning out the light and closing the door. Now, Anshu wasn't afraid of the dark, but he was just a little curious about what happens. And every night, it was the same. First, it was dark, very dark. Anshu wondered, are my eyes open or closed? He could feel Mr. Beans, his very favourite teddy bear, but he couldn't see him at all. And then he started to know that his eyes were open, because gradually, one by one, he noticed lights in the darkness. Across the room was a gentle light, which always made him feel safe and cosy. Then, as his eyes wandered, he could see a long, thin slither of light. Sometimes white light raced across the curtains, lighting up the room, making shadows that swept around the walls. Then, when all was quiet, Anshu would peep through a gap in the curtains to look at the glowing yellow street light. But this time, he also saw two tiny yellow lights. Whatever could they be? Then they blinked at him. But there was also a special light which he sometimes saw in his room at night time. A soft silver glow which crept across the carpet. This was Anshu's favourite. Now that Anshu's eyes were getting used to the dark, he could see his toys in the corner and the books on his bookshelf. And beside them, numbers flashed steadily all through the night. And as he watched, his eyes grew heavy, and soon he was fast asleep, dreaming sweetly of cats and clocks and moons and cars and... The city of Tromsø is built on an island in Norway and is the most northerly city in the whole world. It is surrounded by icy seas and Vicky is arriving at 11 o'clock at night. I think the sightseeing better wait till daylight. I'll see you in the morning. At 
nine o'clock the next morning, her alarm goes off. It's still dark. It's now ten o'clock in the morning, and Vicky looks outside again. Still dark. Eleven o'clock in the morning. And it's still dark. Still dark. It's now two o'clock in the afternoon and it's still dark. So I reckon I need a bit of assistance from the weather station. This is a meter for measuring the number of hours of sunlight. So the sunshine meter's all the way up here, is it? Yes, Vicky, it is. But why? It's because this is the best place to observe the sun. Oh. But you see, we don't use it now. We haven't used it for a long time because we know there's no sunshine to measure. Well, I was beginning to wonder, it's so dark. Yes, it's a dark time of the year. And for more than eight weeks now, we haven't had a sunrise. We have either darkness <gasps> or twilight a few hours in the middle of the day. In Tromsø, in winter, the nights seem to last forever. The sun never rises, but just before midday, a faint golden glow can be seen in the sky. Then, by two o'clock, it's dark again. Morning and night. 